Hello, true art believers. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I make videos of acrylic pour paintings or yeah, acrylic pour paintings. That's what it is. Yeah, make videos of that. I do a lot of those. Live stream drawing videos. And I have interviews with artists internationally around the world. Before I start, please make sure to smash the subscribe button and hit the notifications bell. All right, on today's episode of the Artist Interview Series, I will be talking with artist Joe Paget and her career as an artist. Enjoy the show. Joe, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Joe, um, I just want to say welcome to the show. I really do appreciate you taking time out of your day to uh, come and talk to me about your artwork. I noticed that you have a ton of it behind you, and I know that you're an hour ahead of me, so it's like it's it's almost nine o'clock. Yeah, it's getting close, yeah. about thirty minutes. So you know, I don't want to keep you up until eleven o'clock at night. Uh, <laughs> although, uh, oh, if you have that, if you're able to stay up till eleven o'clock, uh, don't don't. Let me stop you. Um, Joe, how are things today? My days are wonderful. Yeah? What What do you, what's, make, what's a day like? I make them you wonderful. Make, I have, you make, yes, I do. I have, I work part-time. I have to be at work at 5.45 in the morning. And uh, I get up at 4, have my coffee, go to work. And I'm a cashier. So how do you make your days wonderful? I just, um, I enjoy the people. Mm -hmm. And I just try to joke around with them, get to know them a little bit, tease them about what they're buying. You tease, you tease, you tease people? Yeah. What's, what's the most recent thing that you've done that you've teased, like you've made a joke about? Well, they bought a, a a bunch of building stuff, and I asked them if they were going to be working all day on their house, and they're like, mm. oh, no, not my house. And I'm like, well, why not? Is your house perfect? <laughs> and, and they're like, well, no, I already finished my house. I'm working on my neighbor's house. And, and we just start talking and have a good time, and we laugh, and... I do the next customer. So, so Joe, I noticed that you have um, a lot of artwork in the back. Before we even st start that, right? Um, let's talk about art for you as a child. What was uh, art like for you as a kid? My mom made us paper dolls and paper doll clothing. So we watched yeah. her draw. And color them in, and you know, so I got the interest then, but I didn't do anything with it until I was probably in my late 20s. Mm -hmm. And then I really started the painting thing. So, um, why didn't you do anything until your late 20s? Because I didn't think I could. Because I thought to paint, you had to be able to draw. Oh, yeah? And I'm not very good at drawing. You're not very good at drawing? Mm -mm. But I Never can paint. Yeah, it's, it seems like you can, right? Um, so when you were a kid and, and your mother was making these paper dolls and coloring them, um, what were you, else were you doing? as a kid as a, with, with art were you actually painting at all or were you just drawing was there any painting involved as a kid no no did no. you do any like any like uh uh, uh anything art related like anything the, like craft wise did you make like you know uh, uh man, I, I don't know anything coloring books coloring books were you good at uh, coloring in the lines oh yeah 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 and when you were in your 20s, what did you paint? I watched Bob Ross on TV. You watched Bob Ross? Yep. And so then one Christmas, I asked for painting stuff. 
-hmm. and I got a Bob Ross kit and some canvases and that started it and it never stopped. Did you start out by doing like landscapes in the, in the manner of Bob Ross? Yeah. Yeah. Happy little you, accidents. Can you, what's your, can you give me your, your, uh, uh, your, your best, what's your best Bob Ross impression? Like, can you like just stand, pretend like you're, you're standing next to your easel and giving a Bob Ross impression? Can you, can you do it? It's just, it would be when you're making a mistake and it's a happy little accident. You know, it's is this, there are no accidents. Everything just kind of falls into place. I, I hear, uh, is this true? I heard that he um, he would always describe his, what he was doing because he had a lot of uh, uh, blind, blind people listening to him paint. Is that yes. true? And that's true. why he was very, very descript with his paintings. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he's he's super soft spoken. Uh, I I, re I recall he was very it, tall too. Really? Yeah, he was very tall. tall. How I think like was, six was that four? six four? Was that included in his afro? His I hair? don't think so. No. He wasn't he, like he didn't add he didn't add like the extra five to six inches with his hair. He was like, I'm I'm six seven, and he has his giant hair. He was like, and you're like, no, you're not. Just shave that off, and you'll 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 be five four. Yeah. No, I did not know he was very tall. I remember uh, uh, when I would watch some of his videos that he had that giant brush, and he like he would flap it on the on the easel. He'd go back and forth, like he'd clean his brush that way. I thought that was really interesting. And it cleans it very well that way. You, you you probably have to have a a uh, uh, you probably have to have what would you like a an area where you would not mind paint being flicked everywhere. Yeah, uh, uh, that's probably one reason why I don't do that because it just it would, like I would have one messy studio. Do, um, so when when you were working uh, in your twenties and you decided to pick up a paintbrush and you're, you're mimicking or, uh, uh, or emulating Bob Ross, you were just painting through the voice of Bob Ross. When did you start switching gears and start painting in your own voice? Well, I went to uh, three different classes of Bob Ross's. I traveled there. And then um, after he died, I went on and learned uh, the flowers. And this is all mm -hmm. in oils. Mm -hmm. And uh, I stayed with oils until the cleaning material started eating the skin off my hands. So I had to quit mm -hmm. oils. Did, did, when you went to classes for Bob Ross, was he actually there? The first, the first one he was, and after that he wasn't because he was sick. So you and actually he, went to a class. He had you, cancer. Uh huh. And you met him. You met him. Mm hmm. Yeah. And you and you you actually were uh, you actually experienced edu like an education through him or like some sort of guidance. Yeah. The techniques yeah. he taught were are uh, you could use in anything. And I don't even sorry. know how to say it. The techniques he taught were um, how to blend <clears throat> and use an mm -hmm. a medium to help yeah. move the paint better. And um, and you could incorporate that in oils and acrylics. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like I I he taught me a basis. Yeah. And then I went from there. And you really, you spoke to him. Yeah. I know it, it seems like a really silly question, but I'm going to be talking about this like for a couple weeks from now. I was like, do you know, I spoke to an artist that spoke to Bob Ross, like literally, and they're like, no way. And I'm like, way this. Yeah. She spoke to Bob Ross in the flesh. And, uh, and, uh, and they're gonna be like, kidding you're kidding me and i like, no, it's 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 recorded it's recorded it's been verified uh, okay um so when did you learn a lot with that that first 
experience with him and then uh, uh did you yeah. with him oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um was the you said you did three or was it two i did three they had and, um you had to take three classes to be certified as a bob ross instructor because mm. after that i taught that painting for seven years yeah and um you know what'd be kind of cool joe It'd be wow. cool if we, in the future, set up a, a a meeting or a date where you show us how to paint like a Bob Ross. Like Bob Ross, would that be <laughs> would that interest you? Sure, why not? Uh, but only if you if we buy like a uh, like a fake wig, right? Oh yeah, right. And then and then you got to wear some uh, plaid shirts. Is it plaid, plaid or, or is it uh, or is it like a blue blue shirt? I don't really know. <laughs> no, but it would I be don't really. Remember, he wore different <laughs> colors and shirts. I don't remember. <laughs> no, it would be really interesting to, to, to have a a, a a a moment where uh, a time where you you show us how to paint in, in the guise of Bob Ross because you know, uh, I haven't experienced anyone who's 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 spoke with to Bob Ross and actually learned some of his te techniques in person otherwise other than people that like watch his 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 videos and kind of copy them yeah. you know mm -hmm. did did he ever do you have any uh 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 do you remember anything specifically that he said to you no because he talked to the whole class no he never like talked to anyone everyone in person at all well, he would walk around, and if you were having problems with something, he would show you how to hold the brush properly uh -huh. and what way to push it to get yeah. the effect. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, then at so the we, end, he would critique all of our artwork. What do you remember? Any day, because each class was a week long. Uh -huh. Each section so uh -huh. yeah we would critique it at the end and then the next two were taken over were taught by his son mm -hmm. and um was his son as good as him uh, as bob was he as good as his dad uh, yeah yeah he was very good too yeah was bob it a different perspective more little bob was a little bit more serious than his son mm -hmm. his son was funny <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's probably right yeah um that's pretty cool and mm -hmm. and so i know we, we we've we've talked a lot about bob ross so after after the bob ross three three sessions uh, you know, the last two with his son, you know, how many weeks were there? There were a couple weeks each, each time. Each one was a week. Was a week. And did you do a painting a day? Yes. Wow. Painting a day. Wow. Five days or seven days, a whole week or like five. 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 Mm -hmm. And um, after you learned how to paint like Bob Ross, um, when did you switch? I think, We've already spoke about this, but like we're gonna get back to it. We're gonna go to it right now. When did you switch gears to start s painting in your own voice? Started painting stuff that was not about landscapes. When, when the cleaning took the started taking the skin off of my hands. Okay, I okay. Could no longer paint in oils. Then I had to. I started trying, I tried watercolor, but I did things my way. And, um, but then when I found acrylics, that was it to me, acrylics is like painting with um, oils. Mm -hmm. Because, what, you, what? Can, because you can, because you can mix the colors together on the canvas and yeah. that sort of thing. What did you, what were you using uh, to get, um, what were you putting on your hands? What were you getting your hands in to, uh, to it's have like it like turpentine. turpentine? It's like oil. Yeah. Um, and, and, um, 
Wow. Um, yeah, that, that, that like stuff. Mineral spirits, you know, that stuff is hard on your hands. And you yeah. don't really want to get it on your hands, but that's the only way you can clean the oil out of the brushes. Uh huh. Well, did you were you using any type of gloves to hold, to protect no. your skin? Yeah, no. you must have been painting a lot then at the time to really do some damage to your hands. Well, yeah, because I was I taught it for seven years. And you're doing it every day. Mm, well, if I wasn't teaching, then I was painting. So, so yeah, you're doing quite a bit. Oh wow! Um, and what was what was your uh, career as a teacher pa teaching painting like? What was that like? Oh, that's a lot of fun. You you um, I started out teaching at Michael's Arts and Crafts. Oh yeah, yeah. And then I started my own business, and that was for seven years. Mm -hmm. And they came to my home, and I taught them just like a classroom and and uh, you go from person to person you show them how to do each technique if they don't have it quite right or if uh that was with michaels because we all painted the same thing but mm -hmm. at home where i had my business everybody picked what they wanted to paint and then i would just show them the best way to try to get to where they want to go with it mm -hmm. and um how was that business how did how did it go it was great for seven years and then um i moved so i quit the business Is, what did you quit be, like was the uh, i moved the, the... from one area to like a hundred miles away uh -huh. And I lived out in the country, so I didn't yeah. do that anymore. Okay, I did okay. for myself. <laughs> and then when you uh, uh, when you moved after teaching for seven years, would you start painting? Animals, dogs. Animals. What made you gravitate towards dogs? Was it just something that just kind of happened naturally? Because I have dogs, dogs? and I How wanted. Many I wanted to see if I could paint them, and I can. <laughs> there you go. That's a good answer, right? Um, how many dogs do you have right now? We have two right now. Two? Yeah? What's their names? Uh, Annie and River. Annie and River. And are, are those... Are, uh, are the images behind you, Annie and River, are those some other dogs? No, those are... Those are my son's Rottweilers. Your son's Rottweilers. What are, what are what are their names? This one was Sheba. Sheba. And this one was Sasha. Uh huh. And um, I, that was the only the only uh, dog portraits I could get from the people I've done because some of them are from out of state. Mm -hmm. Some of them. I just couldn't get a hold of the people to get the paintings to yeah. to show you. So I got those two anyway. How long does it typically take to to make a uh, a painting such as the uh, sh the dog Sheba behind you? A week. A week, and that's mm -hmm. acrylic, yeah. Mm hmm. And uh, um, what kind of techniques can you describe? What kind of techniques are you using to create? that painting think bob ross well oh that's you paint a happy dog happy dog um it's a lot of uh uh the main thing i i learned from bob ross was the blending okay and and not being afraid to use different brushes to blend different things to get different appearances. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, um, painting a black dog is the hardest. Yeah. Because they're black. And when they, the sunlight or anything hits them, it's blue. Because mm -hmm. they're so black, they're blue. So it's like trying to paint but not make them blue 
So it's a lot of like liner brush. You have to take the liner brush and just keep putting in highlights. Highlights, yeah. And you learn a lot of all about highlights. I'd learned that from Bob Ross, even though he would do them with a bigger brush. He also mm -hmm. taught us how to use the liner brush, you know, with doing trees and stuff, and that you could use, um, you can blend, but just take your time and do it. And then, you know, he also taught us that to make paint go further, there are different kinds of mediums that you can use. And you have to find what works with you with what you're trying to do. And what mediums do you use specifically? Um, I've used extenders, a little bit of water. I don't like to use too much water on acrylics because yeah. that'll break them down and they won't stay on the canvas for years. Yeah, so, the pigment. Yeah. So you have to be real careful with the water. But, um, yeah, you could get uh, Floetrol is great. GAC 800 is wonderful. Um, What's GAC? GAC? Is it GAC or yeah, GAC? GAC 800, yeah. That's real good as a medium. You don't need very much of it. What's it do? It extends the life of the paint. Okay. So by, by how much? And move the paint around and... It yeah. makes it act like a, a, an oil then, an oil yes. paint. Yeah. And um, and the so you have GAC eight hundred flow trawl. Is that that's a a floor leveling agent, isn't it? No, it's what painters use when they paint a house or a room to make the uh, paint dry a little bit, not as fast. Okay. It extends the paint. It gives them time to do a whole wall without one portion drying real quick. Okay. Because if you have one portion drying really, really quick, and then you're trying to paint over it, well, you're putting yeah. a whole lot more paint. It's like putting a third coat on or something. So it might and change the color. But they also need that if they're going to spray paint. Use their sprayers. And you use a lot. So it sounds like you use a lot of paint, like uh, extenders, like the stuff that keeps it uh, uh, wet. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you use that uh, create like maybe that uh, like, like matte medium or, or a uh, um, semi-gloss mediums to kind of make things a little bit more shiny in certain areas? Do you use any of those? I really haven't done that because I varnish them when I'm done. Okay. Okay. What do you use to varnish? Uh, polyacrylic. It's called polyacrylic. Polyacrylic. Put, yes, you put it on. You put it on one way, let it dry, and then you put it, another coat on the opposite way. What's the why? Why uh, horizontal and vertical? Because the canvas has all those little squares, okay. and you want to make sure you get it all over the canvas. The first one, you'll notice it'll have lines in it. Mm -hmm. The second one won't have any. Yeah. And it takes you a week to do one of those dog portraits. And how long do you say when you're painting? How long is a painting session for you? that adds up to a week. Is it, uh, uh, how long would that be? Five to seven days. Well, five to seven days, but like how many hours in that, in that painting session? Are you like working four hours, seven hours, uh, eight hours? Hours. Yeah. Oh, geez. I could sit down to do a painting of an animal Mm -hmm. And I don't even, I, I'll think that I've painted for maybe a half hour and I look at the clock and three hours has went by. Okay. I don't, I don't notice the time because I become the painting more mm -hmm. or less. And, um, <clears throat> but yeah, those take normally uh, 
Uh, I'll probably work on them for a couple of hours and then let them dry. Because so, uh, there's areas, so there's areas I want to, like, I'll start out with just right around the perimeter of the dog. Mm -hmm. And then I'll jump to the eyes. So I have to let the eyes dry before I could do any hair around the eyes. The same with the nose. I want to do the nose or the, the brim. And I got to kind of let that dry before I do anything else because I need it to be, to stay right where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. Those kind of things. And, Other than that, uh, I'll, I'll take a break because I'm tired. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Usually um, after about three hours of painting or four hours of painting, you, your eyes get a little, little yeah. exhausted, you know, and you're like, uh, you're not making you're not doing your, your decision making's a little uh distorted. It's it's uh, it's not as mm -hmm. it's good. like you get into it yeah. and then you lose track of time and then all of a sudden it's like you're out of it and you yeah. know at that minute, stop. Yeah. Yeah. You need to stop. And then of course a lot of times with paintings you've got to you you may you may be painting them and you just don't know if they're looking right. And you have yeah. to stop, walk away from it, come back with fresh eyes. That is very back. key. Mm -hmm. I think um, I, 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 a lot of artists I've spoken to uh, uh, have always said that. Like after a while, um, you're. I always pay, say this: it, it becomes like wallpaper. You become kind of blind to any nuances. Like right. any of the, the, like you don't see the details anymore. It just looks, it just looks like a, like either the image that you're looking at that you're drawing, drawing or painting from looks just kind of blurry. You're not seeing anything because it's, it, your eyes have kind of made it, they flattened it, becomes like wallpaper or the, the piece that you work on it is, is you're not able to see. I, I can't explain it, you know, um, other than you're, you're just tired, you know, fatigue maybe. So you set, so you wake up at four, you have a gallon of coffee and you're at work by five 40. Uh, and, and then you have another gallon of coffee at, at, at six 30. Oh no. Um, oh no. We don't, we don't get any, we, I just drink water at the register. Are you kidding? I'm kidding. I have one cup of coffee in the morning. <laughs> I'm kidding. And then and after and after that five gallons of, of, of coffee um and after work, um, what does the rest of your day look like? What does a typical day look like outside of work? Well, right now my studio is across town. It's uh we took over my sister's basement. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't I go there normally Thursday after work, which I didn't today, but Thursday, Friday, and then um, depending on if I'm doing anything on the weekend, I might go there for a little while. So right now I'm only going a couple days a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you it's, it's easy because when you do acrylic pours, you could do those in in an hour and be done. Oh yeah, yeah. How so many acrylic know, pours like, do you do? Then you got to leave it to dry. You can't touch it for a couple of days. So it's like, okay, what do I do now? Um. So when you're at the studio, is there any any like a starting art ritual that you you have to do do you have to read a little bit do you have to have a sip no. of tea do you do anything no do you... I just the thing i have to decide is what size do i want to make so you decide what kind of size painting you want to make what size yeah and then um i already have an idea of uh -huh. what i want to paint and then I start working on that. Right now I'm working on one that's 30 by 40. 
Mm -hmm. So that's pretty large, isn't it? Yes. And uh, so that one, the way I'm doing that one is I could do so much and then I need to let it dry. Mm -hmm. Do so much and let it dry. And, and what is it of? This one is going to be the sun is going down. And it's one of those uh, beautiful skies that we get here. At, I'm sure you do, too. What state are you in anyway? I don't live in a state. I live oh. in a house. <laughs> uh, Missouri. You are such a, I won't say the word. Oh. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I'm in Ohio. So we get these beautiful sunsets. Yeah. And it's brilliant. And it's, it's a color that you almost can't say whether it's orange or red or, or um, rose or whatever. So I'm doing that. And then I'm going to have a tree in the front. That's going to be an all black and mm -hmm. the ground will be black because the sun is so bright coming through. And then I think I'm going to put two little silhouette people at the bottom of this huge tree. Are you using uh, some photo references for this or is it all from imagination? From imagination? Mm -hmm. When do you think you're going to be done with that piece? It's a rather large piece. I don't know. I'm going to go work on it again tomorrow. Yeah. And then what's the the next thing that you're going to be doing after that? I don't know yet. You don't It'll know? Uh, now, do you do night, when, when I go to bed at night and I'm meditating, I always ask the source to inspire me. Inspire me with ideas and something will come up. You meditate? Sure. What's what's meditating like for you? I've 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 talked to a lot of artists and everyone's all these artists are meditating. I'm, I'm a, what's going on? I don't know what's going on. This, this what's this? It just, this it just clears your mind. Okay. It just, it just clears. That's all. What do you what do you what do you um what do you do when you meditate? Is it just a breathing exercise for you, or is it something else? Yeah, yeah. I just um I count my breath. By okay, you can breathe in to a count of three, exhale to a count of four. And by doing that, you have to concentrate on your breathing. And in mm -hmm. doing that, your mind is clear. Mm -hmm. And then if something happens to come into it and you know it's, it's like an everyday thing that you were thinking of, I just refocus on my breathing. Otherwise, yeah. if it's something that didn't happen during the day or maybe it's a picture or something and i think of that as inspiration mm -hmm. and is it through the nose and not the mouth or yes. just through your okay it's through the nose and then when you blow out it's like you're blowing out a candle so it's a loud breath no it's just okay you just pucker and that way Okay, because I, 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 you don't breathe out as fast when you do that. I, I've seen some, some people uh, uh, do some breathing exercises that m maybe I mistook for uh, meditating, uh, where they're like, <sighs> like, no, no, that's like, like really, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Uh, on that one. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um. So. Uh. The, uh so that's an, a a nice take on it, where you're counting in three and then pushing out for out four. four. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I uh the, the there's ones uh, there's some artists I spoke to where they told you to close your eyes and you're looking up and you're thinking and you're focusing your eyes toward the center right of your head here. Yeah. Right. Um, I do that yeah, too. Okay. okay. All right. So then I'm I'm not uh far off then. No, um, no not at and, all. But I'll tell you does... what. I'll tell you what. During one of those sessions, see this painting? Yeah. This was a pour. It was just and it was a really pretty pour. But during one of those sessions, it said 
why don't you make it into rocks? And I thought, oh, never thought of that. And that's what I did. Because my artwork, I call it, what are they, what's that word? E eclectic. I don't do the same thing all the time. I mm -hmm. do different stuff. So it's always like, if somebody looks at my artwork, they never really know exactly what they're going to see. Mm -hmm. And I don't care because that's just the way I paint. I don't do you, just like landscapes or just pores or just dogs. Or just clowns. No, I don't do that. I just do whatever. <laughs> oh, that was supposed to be a joke. It didn't, it didn't work. Um, anyways. Um, so, happy little clouds. <laughs> so you're 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 doing your your meditation you're looking up toward your third eye and then you 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 had this inclination to convert your poor painting into rocks yeah it did so it was I, like an and it was just an epiphany right yeah it, it, it was just like i saw a picture of the rocks and i was like oh i bet i could do that on that painting that would make and, it different. And that how'd you can how'd you convert them to rocks? Like, what would you do? Like, what? Because it looks they look like rocks. Mm -hmm. Um, well, was the, the first poor... thing I did was I took a uh, black magic marker. Okay. And I drew circles. Okay. You know, not necessarily all circles, but you know, kind of different just the way rocks are formed. And then mm -hmm. in between each rock, you have pebbles, mm -hmm. little pebbles. And then if you've ever done um, water bubbles, you know, you're they're dark on one side from the shadow and you got to make the shadow and then you got to have the light. So you always have to have a light source. That mm -hmm. was another thing I learned from Bob Ross. Every painting has a light source. And, and if you if you give it a light source, you give it life. Mm -hmm. So um, and then but so you have the, the light on the top where the sun, the light's hitting it. And then you've got when you look at rocks, the sides have a shadow. So you just have to do that. And you just kind of manipulate the painting. That's where putting a medium in, you can move that paint. Mm -hmm. And you could take it off, put it back on, whatever you want to do. And uh, that that painting turned out quite well. I was I was I noticed it is your one of your most recent paintings. Is that true? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now you're working on the the um, the silhouette tree with the the, the the two figures and the sunset. Mm hmm. And. Um, What was I going to say is um, what other, oh yeah, I know what I was going to say. It, Cause we're talking about all these techniques. What other techniques have, have we not uh, talked about that, that you uh, utilize uh, quite often? Oh, I know. I know a technique that he, um, he taught us and I love it. I use it in a lot of different things is if your painting looks flat Make a dark line with a line brush around your items because the eye does not see that, that very, very thin shadow. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it, but in a painting, it will, it just makes it pop out. Yeah. So if your painting is flat, that's when you do it. And it's not flat anymore. And it's like a thin line around your objects. Yeah. Very thin. Yes. It's like two hairs, you know. You take a liner brush and you just take it, paint on the very tip of it, and you just create a small little line around things. And it gives and, it dimension. Uh, and that's one of your one of your tools that you use mm -hmm. quite often. Did you use it on the the rock painting there? Yep. 
Yeah. And um, you you mentioned that you do a lot. Of, you do paint uh, paint pours. Yeah. And um, how often do you do paint pours? Uh, I do them in between my other paintings because they're fun. They are. I've been doing them every day. Have you? <laughs> I just that I was like I don't have like I don't have time to to make any paintings so I'm like well I got I'm just gonna do some paint pours and it's something I've been playing around with they're fun and uh, as you they said they they, they they you can you can knock one out in under an hour right, right. Mm -hmm. and we went over how you have you ever you, used the straw with that you know use a straw and you know you could use the blow dryer to blow the paint. Yeah, I don't have a blow dryer. But if if you use a straw and blow out it, you'll get a totally different look. I like how uh, when you do the 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 um, the cells start to form out of nowhere. Yeah, like you start seeing the paint rise up. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's something I've been doing a lot of lately. Uh, I just have a bunch of small little canvases that I've been doing a lot of paint pours. And how many paint pours do you typically do during a, a week or a month? Well, there for a little while, um, I probably did 12 in a week. 12 in a week? They were all 8 by 10s. Yeah, I did a yeah. lot of 8 by 10s. but And they were a lot of fun. Yeah. Do you often do, um, so in, in the same manner of the, the rock and pebbles, right? Do you often do any, um, like paintings where you take, uh, a paint pour and manipulate it to look like a realistic object, like those rocks? No, I've never done that. So that, that's your first try. My first try at what? And making uh, taking a paint pour and making them into a representational object like those oh, rocks. That you, yeah, yeah, that's the first your, time I've done that. Are you going to do more of them? Yeah, I'm going to try. Yeah. I Any ideas? One, I did one paint pour that um, it's real interesting. It's oblong, okay, and um, I blew it out with the a little bit with the blow dryer, but yeah. the rest of it I blew out with the straw. And when it dried and I put it up on the wall and to look at it, in the middle, it looks like a wolf. Did yeah, you draw I a wolf like, in there? Oh. Huh? Did you end up drawing a little wolf in there? Is it titled no, wolf? it's there all by itself. Now I could bring it out by putting a little bit of black around it. <laughs> yeah, that's clearly I a wolf. Thought, there, but Jeff. the painting, though, is um, uh, I just tell people that if they look at the painting, they might be surprised at what they see there. Yeah, because it's it's funny. The one thing about paint pours I've noticed is. People will look at them and they see a lot of things that maybe I didn't see. Yeah. They'll pull out a, an elephant or a, a house or a tree. And I'm like, where? Where? But once they point it out, I see it all the time. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. And um, it's that unexpected result. That's why I think I've been kind of enjoying doing them is because um, I, you do want in, in, in the the lack of control, uh, uh, even though there's a lack of control in your on in with your hand, they still end up being quite beautiful. If you if if they even if it's a messy one, even a bad one turns out okay, you know. Yeah. Um, the only yeah. time a bad one doesn't turn out okay is when it turns to mud. Yeah, yeah, the the paint starts mixing together. Those are my first few ones I did. I was like, these are you all the paints just, just one. Scrape it off and redo it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Joe, do you have any advice that you could give to artists 
that are uh, uh, looking to be artists or just in artists in general? Does that have to be about, you know, uh, the only thing artists? I would say to somebody is find the medium that you like the best. Mm -hmm. And you might have to do that by buying a couple of, of oils. See if you like those. Buy a couple of watercolors, see if you like those. You know, get some cheap little acrylics that you could get those like in tiny little bottles. Try yeah. it and see what you like. Once you yeah. find the medium that you really like, you'll go to town on it and just yeah. do whatever comes, whatever comes to you. Follow your gut because yeah. your gut never never steer you wrong my gut steers me towards cheeseburgers i like mcdoubles myself <laughs> <laughs> i have not had a mcdouble in a while but uh yeah i could see i could see how it, it, it would steer people towards uh a mcdouble there's a there's a there's some golden arches somewhere uh on every corner almost um That's this right. is not this is not an advertisement for McDonald's, everyone. I didn't um, no, I didn't say the word. I just <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, uh, uh, advice is to follow your gut and just experiment, get, just test out things and find what you love as an yeah, artist. Yeah, because you may try, you may try to do water and find out you really enjoy doing flowers. You know, and vice versa. Or yeah. you really enjoy the mountains. And the more you do them, the better you get. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so we're since we're going, kind of going along the lines of like wisdom and uh, uh, like just information and such. Um, do you have any words of wisdom, uh, life advice, um, rules that you live by that you would like to share? Oh, the rules that I live by? Treat everyone the way you want to be treated. Yeah, yeah. That's my main one. I've lived that one my entire life. And I think that's why I have so much fun working when I work. With yeah. People, is because if you treat everybody the way you want to be treated, you're going to treat everybody good. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, you know, you the, the only other thing that I live by is I may not like someone's actions, but yeah. I love their soul. I love their soul. It's good. Deep down somewhere, it is good. So just treat them kind. And a lot of times those grumpy old men will laugh and have a good time with you. You know, I mean, you never know what's going on in someone else's life. Yeah. So, and everybody loves a kind word. Everybody does. Do you have any kind words right now? I love everybody. You're, you're just a little sweetheart, you are. <laughs> All right. Thank you. That's great. Okay. Um, you said you wanted, wanted to keep it short. And I think we're, 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 go, we're, uh, we're, we're almost there. We're almost yeah. there, Joe. I don't want to drag it out any longer. Uh, I got, I got, I think I got a few more things, but I got one more, like one more specific question. Sure. Um, uh, actually, two, but one's one's more. Well, one one's important. This the other one's more like, hey, where can we find you? Um, so this one is like, what would be a dream project of yours? Oh boy. I don't really have a dream project. Okay. Because every painting I paint, I, I'm excited about. Okay. Not nothing like I want to do a, a 500 foot paint pour. Oh, hell. Oh, heck <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to do a paint. <laughs> I didn't realize. I, I didn't realize that was going to. I don't want to do murals. I don't want to do things that are huge, huge. No, uh, uh, no, not. Oh, uh, that, that was funny about that, Joe. Is your, your eyes went really wide for a second? Like, no, <laughs> I don't want to do. That. I, like, oh, 
had to catch <laughs> myself. <laughs> That is, sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> I'm going to have to meditate to get that on my head. Um, so, no, every every painting is a dream project. Then, yeah, because it's it's I never I usually never know how it's going to come out, okay. and so I have found if I'm in a uh, a really good mood and happy, the painting always comes out. If someone aggravates me, don't paint because it's not going to come. It's not a good thing. So I stay yeah. away from it if uh, if I'm having a bad day or or things aren't going well because we all have those days. Moods moods do affect artwork quite a bit. Uh, yes, I, I sometimes I will I'll paint through I'll paint with a. Uh, while I'm in a bad mood and 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 it just makes it worse. I'm like, I'm still in a bad mood. It's not, it's working. All right. Like this is getting worse. And I just getting like more frustrated and it just like, yeah. and then you're like, well, I still got some, t I still decided that I got, uh, I told myself I was going to paint for this long and it feel, I still got an hour and 50 minutes. Oh, <laughs> you go and have, have a glass of wine. <laughs> have a glass of wine. Okay. I'm going to chill now. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Joe, um, where can people find you? Like, where online can they get a hold of you? Where can they see your work? Um, this, is, this is a funny one. Okay. When we, we came up with the name for the website, we call it splashesofart.com. Well, the first thing I said, I saw was, splashesofart.com oh. <laughs> and so i always tell everybody if you can't remember the name think of o fart splash splash o farts splashes of art .com. splashes of art .com. okay and, and do you have they could get a hold of me at joe.splashes <laughs> at gmail mm -hmm. and then you have a you have a, an instagram account Yes. As well. And people can follow you there. Yep. Under and what name? I'm on Facebook. Where what name would that be uh, on Instagram? Both of those are under Joe Paget. Okay. But I also have an Instagram under Joey and Studio. Okay. Okay. All right, Joe. Well, it's it, been a pleasure. It has. It's been a a, a very interesting conversation i learned quite a bit um and uh i just want to say again thank you uh for taking time out of your day to talk about your artwork and talk oh, well, about some of your tech for asking me yeah I and talk about it. i appreciate you and you know talking about um i never would have guessed oh uh, uh i i learned under bob ross you know that's a you, that's a really that's a really good like intro you know to say oh, something like that yeah. that's a good conversation start here like i wouldn't be able to say that like i i learned under this person like who's that person oh professor <laughs> you know? uh and they're like oh yeah bob ross pretty cool guy um and uh, all those techniques um the i'm gonna probably think about uh utilizing uh contour lining some of my pieces in the future you know i i yeah. i've I, I always did that instinctually, like in, by instinct on some areas, but uh, you reaffirmed that concept. And, uh, and I really want to say thank you for that. And again, thank you so much for wow. uh, everything. I really do appreciate you. Well, thank you. Um, and everyone uh, that's watching or listening, uh, I want to say thank you for watching and uh, thank you for your time. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and follow me and also follow Joe Padgett uh, on her Instagram and see more of her work. Uh, again, thank you very much. I wish everyone a wonderful, there you go, beautiful day. That's Pearson right. out. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.